Welcome to another episode of the Coffee and Podcast, where specialty coffee means so much more. I'm your host, Philip Clayman. I'm also the co-founder of Three Tree Coffee, a specialty coffee roaster in Statesboro, Georgia. And you know, this morning I kind of woke up and my back was kind of hurting, like my lower back, and then it kind of radiated up, up my spine a little bit, out to my shoulders, and then I realized that I could feel it in my bones. Today's a three by three by three. <laughs> and what that means is that we have three people drinking three coffees in three minutes. This is a type of episode we do once a month. It's super fun. We get to meet someone from our community and just taste some fun coffee. As always, I have my co-host for this episode, Mr. Cody Barnes. Cody, thank you for joining. Of course. It's always a pleasure. Awesome. Um, and then I'm very excited to introduce our guest today. Our guest for this episode is Mr. Marvin Duncan. Uh, Marvin has had lots of different roles in the specialty coffee industry, including roasting for East Pole Coffee in Atlanta and Perk Coffee in Savannah. So Marvin, thank you for coming on the show and why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, thank you for having me, of course. Uh, and I think you also forgot one role, uh, one of my favorite roles oh. in the one that started it all was being a barista here at Three Tree. Well, you know, I didn't want to brag that it all started at Three Tree. Yeah, it did, yes. it did. I, I actually do credit a lot of the really great habits I have for just like a great experience starting off at the beginning. Yeah, so um, I know I tell you this all the time, but yeah, I think Three Tree was it really formulative in, in my coffee career. So, well, yeah. thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so I, I was a barista at three, three, at three Tree when back I was when I was at school in Georgia Southern, um, and then afterwards went to Atlanta, um, started at, at East Pole there, and I eventually progressed into their roaster and then their quality control guy there, and doing all sorts of coffee stuff there, really, really putting my head to my nose to the ground and like just learning. Um, and then I ended up getting into coffee competitions and, and coffee like traveling and coffee, whatever else that you could probably expect, going to conventions, all that kind of stuff like that. It's been a fun ride. Um, yeah, but I, I've done all sorts of roles, I think. Uh, barista, roaster, head roaster. Um, some importing too. Right? Importing, just working yeah. With some importers. Yeah. yeah, working with some importers. Um, selling green coffee, uh, grading green coffee for importers and stuff like that. So yeah. yeah. Well, let me let me brag on you for a minute. Uh, uh, so Marvin here won. You got second in Brewers Cup. <laughs> yeah. Remind me exactly what he 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 did very well in the prestigious competition. Tell yeah. Us about that. So um, I did Brewers Cup. So it's just basically present a cup of brewed coffee. Uh, that's not espresso. Um, and it's just like a like you showing your your prize horse type situation, and explaining it in a way that you can sort of make all of the like if somebody was just listening to you blind they would be able to build this same cup of coffee uh just from your instructions and and also being able to like describe why you made certain decisions mm -hmm. so um it's a really fun um competition because like you learn a lot about like just the fundamentals of what makes coffee work. And I did that and I did a national competition for it and I got second place, asterisk. It wasn't actually second. They actually took it away from me afterwards. Uh, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, it was a miss, a miss scoring thing. I actually got sixth place, but you know what? It's, it's okay. I, I did get the second highest um, open service score. Okay. So, um, I'm cool with that. Hey, and this is still, yeah. uh, you, I hope you caught this at home. That was a national competition. He had to go through a regional round, and this is yeah. through the specialty coffee industry. So that is still no joke. That is a very prestigious opportunity, and, oh, and that's amazing. Yeah, it was honestly, like, I was just like, oh, cool. I didn't <laughs> expect to make it this far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there, okay, so, like, we're going to take a little side story, mm -hmm. because I think this is hilarious. Yeah. Um, I was... One of the people that was the first round of what's called compulsory. So compulsory is like, hey, you know nothing about your your coffee. They just hand you one and you just got to make it taste good, right? Make it taste as good as possible. Usually the coffee doesn't really taste that great, which makes it even more a little bit difficult. Um, 
And I came in and because it was really early and I was stressing and I was like really, really trying to uh, focus in on the other side of the competition, I was a little bit not prepared for that one. And I walked in and I forgot like half my t materials. Mm -hmm. So I'm there trying to make an AeroPress and I'm like, I need a way to stir this AeroPress. So what I do is I dump out my suck second kettle and I use it as a, <laughs> as a spoon. Kettle? Use the yes. kettle as a spoon? <laughs> yes. Um, but whatever, you know, all things considered for, for that situation, I was really surprised when they were like, oh, you made second. I was like, really? Okay, cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was a moment of like quick thinking. I yeah. Think. yeah. Well, way to go. I, mean, yeah. I can't even imagine preparing for something that big. I'm sure it's super nerve wracking, right? Yeah. And so just, do I have all the materials? Can I remember everything I'm supposed to be yeah. saying and doing? I can't even imagine. So anyways, super proud of you, pumped for you. That was awesome to see. So, you know, on this podcast, we say specialty coffee means more. And what we mean by that is we want to use coffee to end human trafficking. We, we're excited to use specialty coffee as a platform, but coffee means different things to different people. And so my question for you is, why does coffee mean more to you? I think... I think coffee is a great jumping off point for exploring the world. And I've learned that I've, I've was able to interpret so many other different topics and subjects and like really able to learn, um, and teach, um, learn and teach, which I think are extremely important to me, um, through coffee. And that was how I approach a lot of things. I'm like, oh, okay, so it's kind of like this one situation what I was doing in coffee. And I mean, maybe it's because my experience is so heavily based around it, but it's helped me interpret numerous other subjects. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, plus it's, it's fun and mm -hmm. people are really excited to learn about it. So I'm like, I'm really excited to teach you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's so. awesome, man. Okay, so you've you've seen, you've had lots of roles in the specialty coffee industry, and you've seen it from a lot of different perspectives. Mm -hmm. What's one thing you really like about the specialty coffee industry, and what's maybe one thing you'd want to change about the mm -hmm. specialty coffee industry? So I think specialty coffee has some of the most amazing human beings. You know, um, I think all a lot of them are very very genuine, very very like passionate, very very full of life, and they're just. They're just out here trying to explore life, you know, and trying to do their best. And that's really, it's really nice to, to meet genuine people. Um, so when you go to like any sort of convention or like meeting type thing, when you see like friends you haven't seen for like a year or two or whatever, it still has that, wow, I haven't seen you for so long, but it felt like we're still best friends, you know? Um, so that's a great experience to have. Something that I'm not the biggest fan about is there is there is a little bit of gatekeeping that happens where like sometimes people feel like if you're not if you don't know something or if you're not as experienced or something or if you're not as in the cool club or whatever um you're just kind of out there and you're not doing specialty coffee really but I don't think that's true. And I think like that happens both on like in people who with people who work in the industry, but also with customers like they, if they're asking questions because they don't know if they don't know, then you can't blame anybody for not knowing, you know. So I think sometimes like maybe it's because the barista, they, they like not everybody's barista is like this, but like sometimes they are. They can be a little bit. Oh, you don't know what this is. You probably don't want our coffee. And I'm like, well. Maybe they would have. Maybe they don't. I mean, but you don't know until they, they, they try it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, man. It's interesting. You know, something I share with our staff a lot is everybody starts somewhere, right? And I remember a point when I didn't know what any of this mm -hmm. stuff was. I didn't know what extraction was. I didn't know what even oh, yeah. light roast versus darker roast versus medium roast, what even, any of that even meant. Mm -hmm. I just went to a Starbucks. I'm trying to figure out what the heck the menu says, right? Oh, um, so I, I definitely can relate to that sense of it can it can get kind of in our head sometimes and we get mm -hmm. snobby, but everyone everyone starts somewhere. Yeah. Um, and what an exciting opportunity to teach and to yeah. welcome and to invite people into it. Oh, yeah. Um, that's awesome, man. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then my last question before we taste some coffee, you've been to a lot of places around the mm -hmm. world. Uh, what to, Share with me a memorable experience you had on a coffee farm overseas. Um, yeah, so I think 
probably one of my most memorable experiences is definitely the first one. Uh, the first time I went out of town, uh, out of the country for coffee stuff. And it was to Peru, uh, to Haen. Um, it's, uh, really, really high up. It's like 1950 to like 2150, uh, meters above sea level. Um, very, very beautiful. The air just felt super refreshing. Um, the, the land was great. The people were super inviting. Um, they were like, don't drink the water though. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it was, it was super, super wonderful. And like at the end, it didn't have anything to do with coffee, but like the, the farmers, they were showing us, uh, their, their new trees that they just planted and it started to sprout. Um, and they're actively taking their own steps to fight against, uh, global warming. And they're planting a whole different, a whole lot of forests and like, you see their trees all over. And they took us up the side of this mountain. It was like, hey, it's going to be kind of dangerous. If you guys want to go, we can go. Uh, one person stayed behind, but the rest of us went. And when I say the the hill was so steep, it was like like that. And you were just like putting one foot in front of the other. Uh, it was kind of scary, but it was really exciting at the same time. Um, and then to see how proud they were. Uh, that was really, I don't know, it was like inspiring and, and it was super memorable to me. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you sharing some stories. Mm -hmm. uh, let's now turn our attention to some of the coffees we're going to be drinking today. So today on the cupping table, we're going to have the Roast Defect Kit. The Roast Defect Kit is something that Prodigal Coffee puts out every so often. Prodigal Coffee is owned by Scott Rayo, who is like a world-renowned godfather of coffee roasting type figure He's had decades of experience working on lots of different roasters, and he's actually written numerous books on coffee roasting and how to, from a scientific, empirical perspective, best improve the quality of coffee through the roasting side. Um, and so he is an amazing influence and figure on in the specialty coffee industry, um, and so he puts out these roast defect kits every so often. Well, Scott did one with Lance Hedrick. Lance is a beloved coffee influencer. I'm sure many of you are aware of him. If not, go check him out, Lance Hedrick. Um, not only is he incredibly knowledgeable about coffee grinders, but he's got a pretty sick beatboxing uh, gift as well. So that's always fun to hear him, you know, just lay down a, a sick beat. <laughs> So Scott and Lance came together to do this roast defect kit on December 2nd, so fairly recently, to kind of just share um, their experience with these coffees. So what is the roast defect kit? Well, just as you can take the same coffee and brew it poorly or brew it well, you can take a coffee and roast it poorly or roast it well. And specifically within coffee roasting, you can properly develop the coffee, which is a good thing. Uh, you can underdevelop the coffee which can produce some unpleasant flavors. Uh, it's gonna turn out sometimes a little bit more grassy or hay-like. These are all very subtle. Um, sometimes it'll leave your tongue a little dry, maybe it tastes a little vegetal. Um, so these are some of the, ex the taste experiences that can come with an underdeveloped coffee. Um, you can also overdevelop a coffee while roasting. And this one's a lot more difficult to unpack. There's lots of different thoughts on this, but in my experience, the best way I'd explain it is it has kind of like a toasted bread sort of flavor, and it's a little bit more muted. All the flavors are more muted. There's not much clarity on the flavors. It's all just a little bit more subdued, and that would be called overdeveloped. And so this roast defect kit is put out every so often to help roasters and coffee professionals distinguish some of these uh, flavors that come through roast manipulation. So anyways, we're gonna be tasting each of these coffees today completely blind. We don't know which one's which. And instead of choosing a winner, we're actually trying to figure out which coffee was properly developed. And this is tough, guys. These are a lot, these are very small, nuanced flavor differences. I explain them in, in these big terms, but it's usually much more subtle and nuanced. So anyways, I'm excited to see how we do. Let's go ahead and dive in. So we're gonna divvy up the coffees. It's three coffees in three minutes, which means we are going to spend one minute on each coffee. We're going to start all the way down on this end, which we'll call coffee number one. Spoons at the ready. Is our timer ready? And go. We're going to take some, put it in our cup, give it some sips. Okay. Mm. 
Some, some nice flavors. It's tea-like, it's light in general. But the aftertaste has some sweetness to it. I'm, I'm liking the aftertaste. Happy. So, in my eyes, I really, really vi uh, value texture mm -hmm. as a as a taste experience, and this one is not necessarily too smooth. It's mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, not very smooth. Okay, and that's actually it. That, that was one minute. We got to move on to coffee number yeah. two. Dig in. So that one to you was not as smooth in terms of texture. Hmm. Immediately more flavor mm. from my perspective. Yeah. Um, the sweetness stands out too. Mm -hmm. Like there's more dynamic uh, flavors with the sweetness versus the acidity. Mm -hmm. And juiciness, definitely yeah. some juiciness. Aftertaste is really nice. Mm -hmm. Like the entire experience is just sort of dialed up. Mm -hmm. Yep, I would agree. I'm, I'm even getting some like peachy, peachiness. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's it for coffee number two. Last coffee number three after you, sir. It's thin. Hmm. Um, some sort of combination of like, if you had a fruit and then you licked a piece of paper. <laughs> Yeah, not as much going on. Not, yeah. There's not as much clarity yeah. or complexity. And going back to the texture thing, like um, I, I always say a sign of maybe you not fully bringing all of the coffee's flavors out mm -hmm. is when if you've ever eaten like a, something raw, like a raw mm -hmm. vegetable or like a raw like kale or something like that, mm -hmm. it rubs across your tongue weirdly. That's the same experience. That I'm oh, and that's it. That's time. That was three coffees in three minutes. Yeah. That um, actually goes really fast. It goes yeah. really fast. Yes. Mm. Um, and this is, um, okay. Well, let's, just, let's just go on to, to choosing. Mm -hmm. Which one do we think is the properly developed coffee? One is properly developed. One is underdeveloped. Mm -hmm. One is overdeveloped. When we count to three, point to the one you think is properly developed. Y'all ready? Yep. All right. Three, two, one, point. We all pointed to the middle cup, coffee number two. Yeah. I'd be pretty surprised if this is not the properly developed one. And it is. <laughs> all right. Way to go. So now, I'm just going to let y'all speak. Which one do you think is the under and which one's the over? Under, over. So you're saying coffee three is under and coffee one is over. Mm -hmm. I'm, I almost was going to say the opposite. I mean, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that way too because this one still had sweetness. That's the one thing that I kept coming back to. It wasn't as complex. It wasn't as clear. And it was too tea-like on the aftertaste, mm -hmm. but it had sweetness. And this one just didn't. So I'm going to go with this one as under as well. Mm -hmm. Let's see if coffee one is under. What does that say? Under. Under. Okay. Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> Man, so coffee one is under, which means coffee three is over. Mm -hmm. Two and three were... Uh, they all had some similarities, mm -hmm. but it was pretty obvious. Coffee mm -hmm. number two was just yeah, definitely wonderful, exquisite. Um, this was an Ethiopian mm -hmm. coffee from Prodigal, um, and super fun to do this roast defect mm -hmm. kit. Nice. So yeah. awesome! Well, sweet. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you joining me yeah. today in this, and to all of you listening, thank you so much for joining as well. To Scott Rayo and Lance Hedrick, if you're listening to this, we really appreciate what you do, and I'd love some signatures on some gear that I have. <laughs> Um, and other than that, we appreciate you joining. We hope you learned something today. And also one last thing, if you've been listening to this podcast for some time, I just want to ask if you don't mind, please like, subscribe, follow, leave us a review. These things really help us get the word out on this podcast to more people. So otherwise, we appreciate you joining. We appreciate you helping us cultivate freedom and we'll see you next time.